you'll already know a lot about vectors. And today we're going to be looking at vectors, but we're also going to be looking at i and j notation, which will be new to you. So let's get started. A vector must have magnitude and direction. A scalar quantity will only have magnitude. For vectors, we must always define the positive direction. If a man is running to the left and the positive direction is to the right, we can say he travelled a distance of 50 metres, but his displacement will be minus 50 metres because it was in the negative direction. We can say he ran a speed of 4 metres per second, but his velocity was minus 4 metres per second. Acceleration will always have a direction, so as an example of a vector. When you remove the direction from the vectors, displacement and velocity, they will become the scalars, distance and speed. When we work with vectors, we will have a horizontal and a vertical component of the direction. We can use i to represent one unit of the force going to the right, and j to represent one unit of the force going up. Using i and j allow us to not have to run our calculations twice, but also keep the horizontal and vertical forces separate. You may be wondering what happens when a force isn't perfectly horizontal or vertical. Every diagonal line has a horizontal and a vertical component, so we can describe it in relation to these. Let's go through these questions. In this question we're told a man walks two kilometres to the shop and back. Find the total displacement. So if we draw a little diagram, show him walking to the shop and back. To the shop his displacement is two kilometres. But then coming back his displacement is minus two kilometres. Add them together and his total displacement is zero kilometres. Which makes sense because he started at home and he ended at home. So the total displacement is zero. We cannot go directly from A to B, but we can travel to C first and then go to B. We can add the I's and the J's from each part of the journey together to find the vector for A to B. So the A to C part will be 6i plus 3j, and the C to B part will be 10i minus 4j. Add the I's together will be 16i, add the J's together will be minus 1j or minus j. We can draw a right angle triangle for these forces. I is the right hand force and J is the up force. Because J is negative, it's going to go down one. So it's going to go down one and to the right 16. We can then find the magnitude by using Pythagoras' theorem. We show magnitude with vertical lines either side of the A to B. So we're going to square root the 16 squared plus the minus 1 squared. This will give us 16.0 um, to three sniffing figures. The I direction will be horizontal from C. Let's draw this in its own diagram to make things a bit clearer. We can add the I and the J components separately. We notice that we have a right angle triangle with two lengths given and an angle to find. Time for some trigonometry. Because we're mainly um, be using angle, finding angles from vertical and horizontal components, we will almost be always be using tan for these questions. So we're going to have tan, uh, the angle equals opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is three, the adjacent is six, and then inverse tan both sides. So the angle will be 26.6 degrees to three significant figures. Let's finish with this question. Jenny thinks mass is a vector because gravity gives it a direction. Explain why she is incorrect. If you know, write it in the comments below. And also come to onmaths.com or click the link in the description where you can access all of our A-level papers and predictions for free and you can even save your scores with a free account. This video is part of a larger A-level course that you can follow along with at onmaths.com.